The concept of the component did mount lifecycle method is probably the easiest one of all to understand. So let's start with that one. Component did mount is a method that you add to your class based component, just like we have with the render method. So I'm going to write out component did mount. And whatever code I put inside of this method is code that will run immediately after the very first render of my component. So since my app component is set up to run immediately as soon as this app loads, that means that the app component will mount as soon as I refresh my page. Now, if I set this up to make changes to state or if it were receiving props that changed or anything like that, that wouldn't be considered a mount phase. Instead, that would be part of the update phase. And so component did mount would not run again. So like I said, it will run the code that you put inside of component did mount only the very first time this component is displayed on the screen. Let's do a quick test here. I'm just going to write console log component did mount. And then for good measure, I'm going to put inside of my render, but above the return, another console log for render. Let's open up the console and I'll hit refresh. And you'll notice that first we ran the render, which in this case is the first time the component mounts. And then after the render function finished, it ran the component did mount lifecycle method. So what are some common things that we might want to do inside of component did mount? Well, that brings me to this goal that you've probably already read. One really common thing to do inside of the component did mount lifecycle method is to make a call to an API. If your application, or maybe more specifically, if this component needs data from an API, then what better time to reach out for that data as soon as your component loads? We're going to reach out to the Star Wars API to get some data, so I'm going to make a fetch request as soon as the component mounts. We'll do that to this URL. And then we will just resolve this promise really quick. We'll say, we'll take the response and we'll parse the JSON. And then we will get some data and let's just console log the data for now. And maybe for good effect, I'm gonna put my console log of component did mount back in there. Okay, let's hit save and see what we get. Okay, if you were looking at the console closely, you probably saw that it ran this console log for render and then it immediately ran this console log for component did mount. And then there was a bit of a delay, and that's because of the time that it took for it to go out and get data. Then once that promise was resolved, we actually console logged the data, and that's the object that you see down in the console. Now, knowing what you know about React, if my goal is to then display the name of this character, which is Luke Skywalker, on the page in my browser, what will I actually have to do instead of console logging the data here? Any information that I want to stay alive between renders of my component will probably need to live in state. So let me type up a challenge for you. Your challenge is to save the Star Wars character that we're getting back from our API request into state, and then to display the name property of that character object on the screen. This will require you to reach back to some of the lessons that we just learned about as far as modifying state in a class component goes. So pause now and work on this challenge. Well, first of all, instead of console logging my data, I will need to, let me open up the body of this function here. I'll need to update my state. So in a class component, I can do that with this.setState. In this case, I don't really care what the previous state was. And so I can just provide an object that needs to have a character property and the character will be data, or rather the value of the character property will be data. Now let's hit save and see what happens. Very interesting. If you look at the console, we'll see that the render method was called, then the component did mount was called, and then there was a bit of a delay and the render method was called again. Now, why do you think the render method was called a second time? If you said because the state of this component was updated, then you are right. Anytime state or props change for a component, the render method will run again. However, we also can notice that the component did mount method did not run again. Remember, the component did mount lifecycle method will only run the very first time this component is mounted to the page.
Now that our state is actually accepting this new data that we're getting from the API, all we have to do is update hello to say, it should be this dot state dot character dot name. Let's hit refresh. Okay, again, there was a little bit of a pause while we were waiting for the data to come back from the API. But once the state was updated, it reran the render method, which now had a different value for this dot state dot character dot name and thus our page actually updated. For those of you that are coming to these lessons, having already learned use effect in functional components, you might recognize that this is similar to saying something like react.useEffect, having your callback function, which runs your code here, and then has a dependencies array that is empty. With react.useEffect, if you have an empty dependencies array, you are telling React that this effect relies on no external pieces of data in order to decide if it should run it again. And therefore, effectively, it runs this only the very first time your component mounts. So if we were comparing the two, these would be very similar to each other, where component did mount will only run when the component mounts, and react.useEffect will only run your effect the very first time your component mounts. This is giving me syntax errors because I'm trying to do this inside of a class component. I'll just comment it out so we can refer to it later if you want. Okay, I think that's a pretty solid foundation for component did mount. Let's move on and talk about the next lifecycle method we're going to learn about, which is component did update.